Yo guys, As here once again. Welcome back to a new Raid Shadow Legends video. This will be an in-depth guide for the Fire Knights castle. Grab yourself a drink, sit back and enjoy the ride. Let's start off with the boss's mechanics. We will go over his skills first. With his A1 he will attack your entire team. Additionally, he will decrease your champion's max HP by 15% of the damage dealt. This can lead your team to be less survivable over time. His A2 also attacks all enemies on a 5 turn cooldown and places a 30% speed decrease for 3 turns. In a dungeon where speed is so important, this could cause your runs not only to take longer, but also fail. Finally his passive. This is what Fyra is known for. At the start of his turn, he will put up a shield which absorbs 80% of incoming damage. It will also render him immune to all the debuffs during the shield's uptime. If you don't deplete the shield before Fyro gets a turn, he will attack all enemies. Additionally, he will get healed. This attack decreases your champion's max HP by up to 40%. The damage and heal are based on the value of the remaining shield. Okay, now let's talk about his shield. On stages 1 to 6 of the Fire Knight's castle, the shield can be depleted by 5 hits. Once you reach stage 7, the shield's value is 10. This continues for all further stages. His shield will be replenished each turn Fyro takes. Most champions will apply their debuff after a hit, which means you only need to get the shield to 1 in order to apply the debuff. As most of you want to get into Fire Knights 20, we'll discuss only those waves. All in all, there isn't much to keep in mind. Errol, the knight champion here, hits for a lot of damage. You always want to make sure to control him. The other champions can be dealt with quite easily, but the liches could reduce your turn meter. Keep that in mind. On to the strategies. Now that we know all about Fyra's mechanics, we need to think about a way to approach them. We focus on stage 20 and will take the boss's affinity into account. While there certainly are multiple ways, we will discuss three of the most popular. We start with a list of useful buffs and debuffs. Let's quickly go over them. Decrease speed and turn meter and their equivalent ensure you will get all your hits in and deal damage to the boss. Increase defense, decrease attack and veil protect your team from taking too much damage. Increased defense will also increase the damage of all your death based damage dealers. Decreased defense and weaken will significantly increase the damage your party can deal to the boss. Block debuff will ensure your team not getting affected by the speed decrease debuff the Fire Knight applies. Heal reduction will either reduce or completely negate the healing of Fire. Other buffs and debuffs are situational. Check out my video that I made about buffs and debuffs. Find out if they are applicable to your team. If you have 3 champions with a 3 hit attack on their A1, you will break the shield with relative ease. Once the shield is removed, you want to apply your debuffs. The rest is rinse and repeat. Why would you run this strategy? With this strategy, you want to bring the shield down as quickly as possible in order to deal your damage. If you can bring the shield down before the Fire Knight's turn meter is around 60%, you will get enough time to deal damage and apply debuffs. While turn meter decrease would be helpful, it's not necessary since you get rid of the shield quickly enough. Your team needs to be fast to execute this strategy and their damage output has to be high. This strategy also shines if you can combine it with ally join attack. Which champions are good for this strategy? Take a moment and pause the video to look at the champions in the image. When building a team think about synergy. While you could simply throw in 5 3 hitters and it could work, you have to get to the boss first. You want to have a decent balance between support and attack. Additionally. Your team has to be fast enough to rotate around the fire knife. For stage 20, speeds in the ranges of 180 to 220 should suffice depending if you have an ATB booster. Let's build a team as an example. Here we assume you started with Aethel. Ok, let's put in Aethel. She provides a 3 hitter A1 which also applies weaken. Her A3 will give her a slight attack boost and gives her an extra turn. This means she is not wasting time for buffing. You will simply rotate like this, A3, A2, A1, A1, A3. Next we are choosing an ATB booster. We haven't gotten Apothecary, but pull the Seeker. So Seeker it is. Seeker is pretty amazing because he only has two skills. 
we will go a2, a1, a1, a1. We have a light swarm and he is another great support. Let's throw him into the mix. And finally our good friend Razen, which we fused recently. He has everything in his kit we need. Defense break and weaken on a 75% chance and decrease turn meter by 100%. He will be still unbooked in this example. For our last slot we can pick basically anything we have that increases our speed or run stability. You might have some seriously insane damage dealer, maybe you want some additional defense breaks to increase your damage, anything would be fine. As you can see, you are fairly flexible with this strategy once you put 3 champions with 3 hit at once into the dungeon. Depending on your roster, this can change significantly. Okay, that was a lot to take in, so let's take a short breather. While you get a fresh cup of your favorite beverage and maybe a snack, hit subscribe if you haven't yet already. If you also hit the bell, you can ensure to never miss a new upload of mine. This would also help me out a ton. All right. Let's continue with our next strategy. Here our main focus is on keeping the turn meter down once the shield is broken once. This requires a more narrow champion pool, however some champions from the last example will make a return. There are many more champions who reduce turn meter, but here we are talking about reliability. The turn meter decrease should either be on their A1 or they need to have the right affinity to avoid weak hits on long cooldowns. Let's build a team. Because everybody has access to Armiger, we also built him. He will be part of our team. Lich is part of the Resin Fusion and we can fuse him as often as we want to, so we take him in too. He's really strong because his full turn meter decrease is only on a 3 turn cooldown. Only Lysandra provides the same, but she's a legendary. And lastly, we take in Basilius Ronas, since he provides a ton of damage. For this example, he is the only legendary on our account. Now we will fill up the rest of the two slots. This time we actually have an Apothecary. Lastly, we use a War Maiden as our defense breaker. As you can see, this team is fairly free to play in addition to being a really good team for Fire Knight's Castle. I didn't choose the MVPs for this team, simply because you don't need them to be successful. However, if you have them, they should be in your team simply because they provide more flexibility in other areas of the game as well. Now on to the last strategy, or should I say strategies? Well, they have a similar concept, so I grouped them together. These are fairly simple. The theory is that your team breaks the shield after the boss attacks your team. For counter attackers, you only have a choice between three characters. Marta is MVP here, since she provides defense break on her A1, decrease attack, defense buff, and an AoE provoke. She has everything in her kit to make your team survivable through the waves and the boss stage. What differentiates counter attack and reflect damage is that counter attacks work off your team's A1. So if you have any multi hit A1 character, it will hit Fyro for that amount of times. Next, we go over reflect damage. Reflect damage is, like counterattack, a buff. We focus on the AoE version of this skill rather than single target. Because the hits are counted once per champion, you can get a maximum of 5 hits on the boss with this buff up. This is why single target is simply too weak to be mentioned. Here are the champions with this buff. Building teams for this is also fairly simple. Use one of the champions for either counterattack or reflect damage and add 4 champions. Your team template should consist of something like this. ATB boost, speed buff, reliable turn meter decrease like Allure, Armiger or Lich. You might get away with one cold heart, Lua or a soulbound Bowyer, but their cooldown is 4 turns. In that time the boss could get his shield up again and your turn meter decrease might go into the shield. Lastly, you want to have strong damage dealers to kill Fyro in a reasonable amount of time. What you saw in the background is my team. I'm using a counter attack team simply because I already built the champions for other purposes. It just so happens that they are perfectly suited to be my Fire Knights team. Once I get to Spiders 20, I will test if I can use the exact team there too. It's a decent team that still needs a lot of work, but as you can see the concept works fine. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned a bit. Hit the like and subscribe buttons to get this guide to more players, it means a great deal to me.
I'm looking forward to making guides for the rest of the dungeons in the same style. Let me know in the comments if you have suggestions or feedback. I will see you in the next one, and until then, enjoy the grind.